Hey guys, what's going on? Today I want to be talking about something that user Gotta Be Classic pointed out to me and he wrote the following after watching some of my video. Hey, so I wanted to share with your community that there is options for controlling the order in which plugin parameters are displayed. So if you remember, or if you don't, you can see that in my previous videos, I kept talking about that some uh, plugins, when they're being controlled by the UF8, look a little bit odd where there's a bunch of unnecessary uh, controls uh, in the beginning and that the main controls that we really care about are sort of like spread out over the end. Sometimes they make sense, sometimes they don't make sense. So some plugins really map really well and others don't. And so for me, it was like, well, find the plugins that work for you. And while that is a good strategy, it's by no means ideal. So he says, people who have been using do-it-yourself mapping MIDI controllers for third-party plugins for years, look how far behind I am, have discovered, at least for Logic, I think that's the thing here, at least for Logic, that if you load a plugin, ideally one you use a lot, I think it doesn't matter, but, and hit save as default. In the plugin presets window, it creates a CSP parameter file. So what, and that, that means if you save as default, it creates this CSP parameter file, and I tested that out, and that works. Also means that not, if you have 100 plugins installed, there aren't 100 CSP parameter files on your, on your computer. They are, by the way, in your user folder, if you save that same plugin though, save as default, even if it is already the plugin's default, you have to actually save it again, it creates this file. This text file displays the order of the plugin parameters in a list format in which you can re in which you can reorder using one, a text editor, or two, one of the few apps developers have made specifically for loading and rearranging these CSP parameter files in a drag and drop format. And that's exactly what I found. I found this app right here for Mac at least, and I am linking it in the description. So you can then arrange, for example, any compressor for display, attack, release, threshold, ratio, etc., across the screens, pages, banks, however you want, and then save the file. Your plugin will load up functioning automatically. That would make the UF8 much more effective at controlling third-party plugins. People have been doing this for years with all kinds of neat controllers. He gives a few examples. Always good to make backups of the parameter files just in case any DAW, OS updates, etc. A lot of convos on Gearspace and other forums. And yes, yes, hell yes, absolutely, damn. So I said you just single-handedly doubled the value of people's UF8. Great reminder. Well, it's not a reminder because I didn't think about it and I didn't know about it. Not a reminder. It makes total Sense. So, yes, got to be classic. Thank you for sharing this. So I went down uh, for not too long, 20 minutes or so down that path and looked on forums. And that's exactly what people are doing. Um, at least the ones who are true computer mixing engineers. Remember in the old days you had to cut wires and do all of these things and know about electrical things. I think in this day and age we are still engineers and our skills are more on the computer side. So it is a skill that we should learn a craft that we should learn. The cool thing is with that editor you can really adjust it the way you want it. And I will give you a few examples. And it worked very, very well for me. Um, no big deal at all, super versatile, and you can really squeeze out maximum ease of use, comfort of use, I should say. All right, so let's look at the vintage graphic EQ. It's basically an API style EQ that is mapped upside down if you just pull it up. It's a great example to show. So it starts with, if you look at here on the left, this 16 kilohertz and so it goes from 16 all the way down to 31 versus 31 all the way to 16 so it's completely flipped and that's a good uh, example for us to map these parameters so the first thing is we want to uh, first of all let's reset it that's the first thing reset to default and then we're going to save it as 
uh, default, and that's creating this CS parameter parameter file. Sorry, I'm saying this in German, parameter or Latin or whatever. Um, and this is, since it's a logic plugin, it is in music, um, music apps, and then plugin settings there. Um, but you know, uh, you'll find the other plugins in the regular plugin settings. So navigate down to um, Vintage Graphic EQ, and here it is. And we're going to open this with the plist editor that we downloaded. And here we are, off to the races. It's a fairly simple one to do. There we go. Just it's a matter of dragging and dropping. And like um, like he said before, yes, you can do this in the text editor, but who's got time for that? So we're going to reorder the most obvious parameters. And then there's others like drive and modeling and uh, overall gain and so forth. Uh, and tune as well, where you can uh, tune uh, so you're not locked to 31, uh, 63 and so forth. So um, the key is to end up in my book with 16 parameters, 0 to 15. And then you have exactly two pages. Um, because each of these pages is eight parameters. Uh, if you do less than 16 or a fraction thereof, that is not based on eight, a multiple of eight, then you have these overlaps going on where they, one flows into the other page and shows up on uh, both pages. And that is it. And then you remove it, no plugin, and then load it again. So you have to reload the plugin. And it is then complete. And the controller is mapped 31 all the way to four and then eight and then the other parameters there so how hard was that not hard at all so now it's fun doing this because if you lay this oh, exactly over your uf8 um it's actually on my monitor exactly the width of a uf8 uh, and you can rescale it and it works perfectly you can look at the screen and just touch so this is a great one to implement by the way uh so the same thing here with uh teletronics uad la2 um and here i want to go with uh emphasis so it's counterintuitive the way it loads it starts with peak reduction is the first parameter and then gain sure i can cross fingers it's not many parameters just a few five or so but i'm going to do the same thing save it as first reset it and save it as default then i'm going to hunt down for the cs uh parameter file i'm going to open that up I'm not even wasting time here you can leave that window the find the window open and do multiple and then we're going to reorder and it's going to be so much fun editing this, uh, working with this. You know, once we tweak it, you can insert it on every channel, you know, and just use a good amount of plugins that you really like that are comfortable to work with and use them over and over again. And your workflow is going to be so much easier. Um, that is the key here. We're trying to make things easy and intuitive. We don't want to think. Thinking... <laughs> good friend of mine keeps saying thinking is overrated it truly is in music um with thinking so much we're working so hard um and that's why people love an analog hardware that those fingers just grab a knob and here we go and here it is um i don't have a video of the uf8 for this right now but it is mapped left to right cool I do that with a session that is not important, but then I don't save this. You don't have to save this session. Um, okay, let's do it with uh, UAD Empirical, Empirical Labs Distressor, which is mapped pretty well, but it doesn't start with input, attack, release, and output. It rather starts with a ratio and then goes into the detector mode and stuff. No, no, no. Um, and starts with bypass now i want to start tweaking left to right with input attack release output so i'm rearranging here yep and sometimes you know you can get creative you can say like you know which ones which parameters are the ones that i'm going to need the most for me the mix knob is very important as well um and so i i rank them by the things that are most intuitive and sometimes when you have to make a compromise just uh, pick the one that's you know that you're gonna reach for the most often 
And here I'm doing something, I only have 11 parameters, 0 to 11, so there's going to be an overlap when we flip page, when we flip from the first page to the second page. Again, no plugin, and then reload it. This reminds me to really get rid of some plugins. And here we go. Here we go. Yep. Look at that. Oh my God, it feels so good, especially this implementation of uh, UAD. It's got a, what's rare for UAD for Universal Audio is that you have the, a large graphical interface that looks really sharp and crisp. This is the one. Uh, there's a few, but this is one of them. Yeah, what well, looks really luxurious, as one of my friends would say. Everything has to be luxurious for him. So, yeah, um, great plugin to use that way. So, this is about it. I think you can, there's other uh, softwares that can help you edit those plist files, but this is, this is super easy. And if you need to fill up, so if you don't have 15, uh, 16, you can uh, copy blank knobs in there so you can do like uh, you know like 11 12 13 14 15 they don't have to have any function but it'll still prevent the page from skipping if that makes any sense all right folks so let me know uh, what you think i think uf8 is just at the beginning of what you can do the plugin mixer implementation i'm going to do the next video about that and that is something else anyways um Please let me know uh, how you're doing this, if there is a way to do that in other uh, DAWs than in Logic. Um, I'm pretty sure uh, there must be something like that for other DAWs, uh, but at any rate, the UF8 is definitely capable of being programmed in such a way. All right, massive beats out, enjoy.